Hi, we're the Hawaii family, Sheila, Bob, and young Griff. We're gathered just to wish you all a happy Christian Family Sunday. We hope uh, everybody stayed safe and you're enjoying your families on this special day. Yes, welcome uh, to Spirit West United Church. We're glad to be here, even though we miss all of you and don't see you here regularly. Um, this Sunday, I think, is about nurturing, and we're trying to nurture this new young member of our family, and, uh, and he's learning to nurture us. All the best to all of you, and uh, we do hope we'll see you soon. Bye. Welcome to this worship video for Sunday, May 9th, 2021, Christian Family Sunday or Mother's Day. I am the Reverend Larry Wright, minister at Spirit West United Church in Edmonton, and I would like to thank Sheila, Bob, and Griffin for being our greeters this morning. You may notice that our set is a bit different from usual. We are recording this worship video in the family room of my house in St. Albert. As many of you know, we have signed a lease with a daycare. One of the conditions of the daycare's license is that smoke detectors and heat sensors be upgraded in the church. That work is going on right now and is a somewhat noisy process. So here we are for Christian Family Sunday in my family room. The music and words for the hymns will still appear on your screen, as will the subtitles for the prayers and prayer responses that I will invite you to say at home. And now, for some heavenly humor. now light our Christ candle. On this Christian Family Sunday, we are called to celebrate relationships, mothers, grandmothers, and all those of every gender who nurture us. Our God is a God of relationship, who seeks us out and longs for us to connect with others and with all of creation. Let us gather in the light of Christ to celebrate all of the loving relationships that shape and bless our lives. In celebrations this week, Colleen and Clarence Fox celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary last week. Happy anniversary. And on Friday, it was Margaret Benson's birthday. You will know Margaret as the voice of our hymns each week. Now, Margaret didn't want to have her birthday mentioned in celebrations because it meant that she would then be singing happy birthday to herself. But Margaret, 
we got that sorted out. So happy birthday. Let us join in the call to worship. Come, mothers and those who mother. Come, all who have mothers. Through birth, adoption, or fostering, or simply by being taken under the wing of someone with a kindly, mothering soul. Come, those for whom today is difficult and confusing. Those for whom today brings anger or grief. Today we worship in music and prayer the God who loves us with a maternal love, beyond anything we could ask for or imagine, beyond what we hope. Come, let us worship God. Our opening hymn is Jesus Loves Me, number 365 in Voices United. When we've been able to gather together as a congregation in the church, this is the point at which I would ask the children to hand out flowers or chocolates to the women of the congregation. For the second year now, that can't be done. So I'm going to reprise a segment that we created last year, where we see images of God not as Father, but as Mother. Our mothering God. In Psalm 17, the writer prays to God, Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In Psalm 57, the writer prays, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. In case you thought that all the biblical images of a mothering God involve birds, the prophet Hosea gives us a picture of a defending God. I will fall upon them like a bear robbed of her cubs, and will tear open the covering of their heart. And the prophet Isaiah gives us this lovely image of God as he talks about the restoration of Israel and Jerusalem. I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandle on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 12 and 13. Happy Mother's Day. Now, let's go back to the family room for our time for all ages. 
So today I'm going to ask you a question. Who's your mother? Now for some of you that will be an easy question to answer because you just turn around and point to someone in the room and say, well that's my mother right there. For others it's not so easy. For older people their mothers have already passed away and they may be only able to point to a photograph and say, that was my mother. Now, when I was younger, there was a tradition that when you went to church on Mother's Day Sunday, you wore a flower. You wore a red one, if your mother was still alive, and you wore a white one, if your mother had passed away. Well, you'll probably notice that I'm wearing both today. Because it turns out that I have two mothers. One of them that I knew for over 60 years, as my mom, passed away some years ago. The white flower. But I also discovered that while I knew I had been an adopted child, I only found out a little over a year ago that the mother who gave me birth is still alive and living in Ontario. I'm in a really special situation. So I have a red flower as well. It takes all kinds of people to be mothers, to be mothering, to be nurturing, to be caring. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you have your own children. There's a story in the Bible, and it's not one that Colleen is going to be reading to us this morning, that Jesus was speaking to some of his followers, and someone came by and said, Hey Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside, they want to talk to you. And Jesus said something really strange. He said, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? Well, you'd think he'd know by now who his mother and brothers are. And then he pointed to those who were around him. And he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. All of us can be mothering. All of us can be the mother, the brother, and the sister of each other. As long as we remember God's call to love. So make sure today that you thank those who have helped you grow, especially those who have mothered you. And to those of you who are watching and are mothers, Happy Mother's Day. Now, let's listen to Colleen as she shares with us today's reading from the Bible. The first reading is from the letters. 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Gospel reading is from John. John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and prayers of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So here we are on Christian Family Sunday or Mother's Day. As I indicated earlier, the whole concept of mother and mothering is a bit complicated. And that's part of the reason why in the United Church we have moved to calling this Sunday Christian Family Sunday. To acknowledge that nurturing that not just mothers or our biological mothers provide. As I indicated earlier as well, I have two mothers both who have given something important to me being here. And I think now if we look to the scriptures that Colleen shared with us, we hear more about that, that love that should be a mark of all our nurturing relationships. And that's that self-giving love that Jesus talks about. Now, some people talk about a selfless love when they talk about something, somebody they admire, somebody who, who thinks of others. But I think that misses an important part of that love. Self-giving indicates that you are aware that what you are sharing, that love that you are sharing with another, is from you. It's part of who you are, that you're extending out, that you are in a relationship. And I think that's really important to understand. Sometimes self-giving love will hurt as we give of ourselves. Sometimes self-giving love will be a challenge But that does not mean that we should not love in that way. And love isn't just about feeling nice about someone or wanting to hug them. It's much more than that. It's a de deep desire to see another succeed, to grow, to blossom, to be the best that they can be, that they can achieve all that they can that they can be the people God has called them to be. That was what Jesus was talking about when he said that the true friend was the one that would actually be willing to give their life for another. That's probably the deepest form of self-giving love. But it's also part of that love that is involved in nurturing in helping another to grow. We look at the helpless, helplessness of a small baby. They need feeding. They need cleaning. They need looking after. They need protecting. They're completely incapable of doing anything on their own, except a few biological functions and sleeping. And yet, because we see the potential in them, because we receive such an overwhelming sense of 
concern for these helpless beings, we are willing to make the commitment to help them grow. Sometimes as parents, sometimes as teachers, sometimes as grandparents, guardians, friends, neighbors. In our world today, we hear a lot of people talking about their rights and their freedoms and how they need to be able to do exactly what they want to be able to do when they want to do it. It's about what I need, what I want, what's good for me. That is completely opposite to the message of the Gospel. The Gospel calls us to give of ourselves, of our wants, of our needs, for the good of others and for the good of the world in which we find ourselves. To care for all of God's creation. To see that all that, was, that is within our grasp, that is within our touch, is able to grow and flourish with our assistance, if we can give it. Right now we're separated from one another in, in many ways. And yet there are ways we can still share that concern, share that love, share that message that God is love and that we are willing to reach out in God's name for the benefit of all those around us. So on this day of Christian Family Sunday, when we remember that we are part of the family of God, I will also say, thank God for mothers, thank God for those who mother, and thanks be to God for all who give selflessly of themselves, who give of themselves in concern and love for others. Amen. Usually I introduce this part of the service by saying that our church building is quiet. Well, today, as you heard, it is not, which is why I'm in my family room. And yet the church is still at work, and gifts of time, talent, and treasure continue to be given to maintain the mission and ministry of Spirit West in our community. Let us pray. Generous God, you invite us to give you gifts from the abundance that we have received from you. We know that our offerings will be transformed by you into precious gifts, in the same way that the dandelions we brought to our parents became priceless bouquets. Amen. In his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. God is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let us take a moment to center ourselves as we move to offer our hearts to God in prayer.
Let us pray. O Great Spirit, whose voice we hear in the winds, and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear us. We come before you as your children. We are small and weak. We need your strength and wisdom. Let us walk in beauty, and make our eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset. May our hands respect the things you have made. May our hearts honor and cherish those you have placed in our lives to mother and nurture us. May our ears be sharp to hear your voice. Make us wise, that we may know the things you have taught your people the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. We seek your strength, not to overpower the other members of our family, but to live in harmony with ourselves and all your creation. We seek your strength and healing for our world and those whom we name today, Brian, Mitchell, Michael, and all who mourn Adina, the family and friends of Betty Marshall, the family and friends of Brian Arndt, Vivian's daughter-in-law Lori, Nate, Megan, Judy, Liz, Elaine, Marilyn, Leanne, and Bev, Shelley, Laverne, and family, Darcy, Troy, Liz, and Max, Hazel, Stella, Rick and Donis, Harper, Adam, Les and Burl, Lee, Harold, Irene, Lucille, Gisela, Margot, and Courtney. All those affected by the COVID-19 virus and all who are isolated from their families and friends by lockdowns and quarantine as we await the day when we can again live more fully in community. O oh, Great Spirit, help us to be ever ready to come to you, so when life fades as a fading sunset, our spirits may come to you without shame. And we continue to pray in the words we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In announcements this week, Zoom Coffee Hour continues Sunday at 11.30. The link can be found in the Thursday e-message, in Saturday's worship video email, or on our Facebook page. Please note that you need to use the link for May and June. We are still looking for someone or a couple of people who have a passion for cleaning and would like to have a go at the two stoves in the church kitchen. We have determined that both ovens are self-cleaning, so we just need someone to wipe them out when the cycles are done. We would like to have them cleaned before the daycare moves in. Call the church if you feel called to oven cleaning. Those are our announcements for today. Our closing hymn is My Love Colors Outside the Lines, which is number 138 in more voices.
We remember those who have shown us the way and invited us to live as part of the family of God each new day. We depart, we depart to, to share, share the truth we have received and to live with the hope that we cherish as part of the family of God. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia!